Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D back with a quick Octoprint setup video. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is head over to the Octoprint homepage, click download, and scroll down to download the latest version for the Raspberry Pi. Next, we're going to use the Raspberry Pi flash tool to flash the image to an SD card. Alright, now we're finished flashing our SD card. Reinsert it into the computer, open the boot drive, and we're going to go down and select the WPA supplicant file. You have to use Notepad++ to edit this file or it will not save and work properly. I'll have a link below for that program. Now we're going to scroll down to the WPA section of the file. You're going to highlight this and insert all your Wi-Fi information here. Once you have finished changing all this, remember that you have to scroll down to the bottom of the file and change your country code. Don't forget to do this or your Wi-Fi may not work on boot. Alright, let's boot up the Pi. In your browser, load the address of the Pi. Check the Pi itself with a screen attached to find the address or check your router to see what it is. First thing we're going to do is set up the access control. Here we're just adding a username and a password for our system for us to log into and monitor. Once you have finished making your user, we're going to click next and go through the next couple pages. There really isn't anything that we need to change or adjust for these next couple pages. Alright, moving on with the first setup. These first couple pages are fairly straightforward and you just need to enable them and click next. We have our plugin blacklist processing, which we enable so we don't get any dangerous plugins. And now we're going to set up our Viper. First thing we're going to do is type in the name Viper, go down to the model, type in any cubic Viper, and then we're going to go to the build plate and volume. First, we're going to go down and put 250 millimeters for the X, 255 millimeters for the Y, and finally, we're going to put 265 in for the Z-axis. Everything else on here stays standard. Click Next and we're all ready to go. Now we're going to take a look at a few plugins I personally like to use. First up, UI Customizer. This is a theme system that changes how Octoprint looks. After that, I like to add the Dashboard plugin. This adds a tab on your main page with plenty of information on your prints such as layer height, temperature, and time. After that, I'd like to install the resource monitor for the Raspberry Pi itself, giving information on CPU, memory usage, and the temperature of the unit itself. Once that's finished, I add Arc Welder, which is a handy tool to smooth out curves on prints by reducing moves needed to do an arc. Alright, once ArcWelder has finished installing, we're going to go back and we're going to install the Heater Timeout. This is a safety feature that if you don't start a print after preheating, it will shut the heaters off after however many minutes you have set in the plugin. Then, I like to install the Navbar plugin. 
This shows the Raspberry Pi system information on top of the nav bar. We will also add the preheat button. This is handy for printing. I will always use the preheat button before I start a print to get the temperatures up to heat for the hot end and the bed. Next, we're going to add display layer progress. This is just a plugin giving you layer progress as you're printing. Once this one is finished, we're going to go back and then we're going to install the Print Time Genius plugin. This gives you an approximate print time that your print will take based on scanning of the G code. Once this is done, we are finally ready to go in and update the actual system of the Octopi. So we're going to go out of here. We're going to go back into the area of the plugins, scroll down to System and Updates, and then we're going to hit Update. This can take several minutes. Alright, once rebooted, we're going to go into plugins, go down to UI Customizer, and we have the ability to choose a different theme for our Octoprint. After you choose a theme, you can go into the layout and change which tabs show up in which sections, or you can hide them all together. Once you have this set up to your liking, you can move on to the next section. This is the main tabs in your main page. You are able to change the order of these to make switching between them easier and smoother on your system. Now that we have it all themed, click saves and we're finished. Now let's connect to the Viper itself and take a quick look at the terminal tab. Once you click connect, it will scan your system looking for the Viper. Once connected, you can click on the terminal tab and this will give you information on what the firmware has enabled on the printer itself. Another handy item is go down, click on here, and type in M503. This command will show you a complete setup of all your printer settings and options and how they are set. You also have the options of changing all options such as your e-steps, your jerk, your acceleration, and other options on the printer through the terminal. Now you're ready to load a file and print. Let me know in the comments below how Octoprint works for you and your Viper. This was just a quick setup video and we will take a deeper dive in another video of the features and different options in Octoprint including the camera. Thanks for watching everybody and as always like and subscribe for more from Studio Zombie 3D and check out our Instagram to see what's currently happening in the studio. Take care everybody and we'll see you in the next video.